This portion of the CU Podcast is brought to you by Retrobit. Retrobit is back and bringing another high-quality set of re-releases to the table. This time it's Valus, one of my personal all-time favorite series of action platformers. Help Yuko take on the dark world with weapons, spells, and precise platforming. This magical gale kicks serious tuckus. The three Genesis games will be getting the excellent Retrobit treatment we love. Valus is a 16-bit remake of the original title, and Valus 3 introduces Yuko's friends. And then there's Sid of Valus, a cute spin-off with super deformed, cutesy graphics. Each game comes in a replica Genesis hard case with a full color manual and reversible art. These cases are solid, they feel like the real deal. I love them. If you buy all three, you'll get a master slip case to store them all attractively and an acrylic standee featuring Yuko and her friends. These aren't the same games on the Valus collections for the Switch. These are the Genesis versions which have previously not seen re-release. There is no overlap between the existing collections and these games. These are playable on all original Genesis and European Mega Drive systems, plus most clones. They will not play on any Japanese Mega Drive systems. They just don't fit. Each Valus title is available separately or all three bundled together with the acrylic stand featuring the characters and the slipcase. Pre-orders are open until November 27th. If you're in North America, you can order at Castle Mania Games or Limited Run Games. Or if you're in Europe, you can go to Strictly Limited Games, Dragon Box Shop, Spielosant, or Just for Games. Want to march into the the main topic, Ian? Oh, it's just a little old main topic. Um, I don't know if anyone heard about it, but a video came out last week that you should probably watch. Uh, it's a small video. Uh, it's a short video uh, by someone not very well known. H bomber guy, I believe his name is Harris. <laughs> yes, uh, H bomber guy, uh, big oh YouTuber, uh, put out a two hour long video, and um, I never watch YouTube videos ever i just i don't like watching video I, i'm not a huge movie guy i don't watch tv often um and youtube has never been my way of absorbing information uh but this video had me from beginning until end and it was it gripping is, is right it, huh it was gripping yes uh it starts it, it basically it starts out with a little bit of the history of the oof sound effect um made famous in uh, roblox and Oof. um obviously anyone who's been following us you know we've been talking about you know this has come up when referring to a certain person named tommy taylor rico um so it starts as a look into the history of the oops sound effect and at about the halfway point you get kind of an answer ha uh, not not halfway it's not even close to no, halfway. I'm sorry, not halfway half an hour, half half an an hour, hour. i meant to say because it, it's really like right at the 30 minute mark can i only let me play the oof sound real quick sure <laughs> That's that's the sound. This that's is the, the death sound. sound. That was a death sound. Um, what the video turns into, and um, you know this this person Harris Harris. I believe it's Harris Harris. Uh, really enjoyable person to watch, by the way. Uh, I can see why he's uh, wildly popular. Yeah, he's done videos. Uh, he's uh, great talking about the anti-vax movement, about climate denial. He, he uh, why Ben Shapiro's an idiot. He has a famous Aquaman Ben Shapiro meme thing, which is hysterical. So yeah, I'll have to catch up on some of those because oh, I really did enjoy. Great. I really enjoyed his delivery and his style. But anyways, so it starts off as this exploration of oof and then turns into a layer by layer. As he peels through layers, he starts to learn about our favorite person, Tommy Tallarico. And it, it becomes an investigation into Tommy Tallarico. Um uh, the lies told by Tommy Tallarico, how these lies com compound um, and how an entire history of, of believing his lies, you know, leaves us with something like we, we have an inaccurate record. We don't know exactly what parts of his career are even true at this point, you know, is, is basically what it comes down to. And it ends up being a look at how easy it is to rewrite history, even in a uh, burgeoning new area i mean we really we really only have you know 50 you know video games have about a 50 year history right now that's a young history that's a, that's a young past if that makes sense and it shows just how easy even in such a young barely formed um area uh, it is to 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 you know change the facts sure um so, I mean, it's fantastic. So that's, that's what it is. Um, 
It goes through a number of the things uh, that we've talked about on here and haven't talked about. It goes through his Guinness uh, World Records. It goes through the undeclared. Um, uh, hello. Hi, guys. Hey, Spike. Hi, Spike. There you go, Spike. It, it, uh, it goes through a lot of Tommy's past claims. Most of them we went through on the podcast over the past years. Like you said, the Guinness World Records. Um, being involved in, in games that there was no record of him actually working on games like Metroid Prime, where it's like, what did you actually do on this? Like, like what, what did you really do? Uh, working personally, quote unquote, hand in hand with Shigeru Miyamoto, which we, we've, we've lambasted how insane that is. I think I said at one time Miyamoto wouldn't be able to pick him out of a lineup. Right. Um, and really peels back the the deceitful history of, of really... I'll, I'll just call him a charlatan, uh, really uh, pumping up their accomplishments. Did, did they accomplish nothing? No, they did They did things in the industry. Tommy did things in the industry, yes. but did not work on 350 games. The, the number in the, in the video was probably closer to really like 60 to 70 uh, games being associated with. Um, and just really looking at an individual who's built their career on a house of cards, at least their reputation, to get to this point. And, and while I was watching it, I, I said to myself, well, this is, this is interesting because you're going to introduce a lot of people to Tommy's, uh, we'll just say, I mean, his lies and what type of person he is, uh, a whole new audience of people that hadn't heard of him before and a lot of people that had. And like you said, this is someone who's basically trying to change history about uh, changing credits uh, who actually worked on things. Like one yep. of the th things about Roblox that was interesting that we brought up, we covered this a uh, month back and why they took it out of the game because uh, Roblox, uh, Tommy argued that they, okay, they stole this this song Roblox from this game Messiah that Tommy Tallarico Studios did the sound design on. But Tommy Tallarico Studios was just Tommy farming out work to other people, including Joy, Joy Curris, who was a sound engineer who still works to this day. That was why I like this video a lot, Ian. We learned that Joy Curse has worked on a lot of stuff, including he's still working in the industry. He's still working on uh, Fortnite, sound in Fortnite. Like, this is a prolific person who has worked in the industry for like over 30 years. And I don't know much of his accomplishments because people like Tommy Tallarico are burying them. Right. But or, it did, I mean, luckily it brought him, you know, some recognition that he deserves. So, so uh, we talked about before how Roblox, uh, Tom was trying to get money out of him. By the way, in the video, uh, the, the the insane video where Tommy's at attacking Roblox and then like saying, "Oh, I want to work with these guys, but you know they, they owe me money," saying that the ma the degree of the the offer was off by a hundred times. times. He said they offered a hundred times less than what Tommy wanted. That's so. I'm guessing. I'm just doing pat math. That they probably offered him something like ten thousand dollars, and he wanted like a million. Yep. That's what my my base thought is. Is that you, something around that? You think something like I, that? My right? guess is uh, fifty thousand, and he wanted something like five million. Yeah, yeah. I'm giving him too much the benefit of the doubt because that because like what you said is probably closer to the truth. I'm like, well, maybe a million is still crazy, but not too crazy. He probably yeah, that's probably probably what it was, or like twenty five thousand for two two and a half million. So Tommy wanted all this money, but Roblox said, well, we, we just got this sound from a sound pack, and so you know we didn't steal it. So. It delved into the history, and then Tommy claimed Joey Curtis's name is on the, the the sound file in the metadata from exported from SoundForge, so which means that they processed it at least. Tommy kept changing his story about, well, I don't know, you know, I, we worked on it, I worked on it, we did all this processing and pitching, and this is my single uh, favorite part of the video, and this is this I really wanted to talk about this. Um, everything is you know is is interesting, and everything else is important, but this segment of the video was masterfully edited and put together because it you can see the thoughts working in Tommy's head in real time, the way he puts it together, the way he makes that first tweet created by Joey Curis, then starts using we, then deletes it. Then he has that Roblox stream he does where you're right. He's he's literally trying to make it sound like he was in the room and be well, we did a lot of, you know, editing and, and, and trimming and but he he never gets right down. EQing. Says, I made that sound effect. Huh? Yeah, we did a lot of EQing and I'm, I'm looking at a lot like, of EQing. It's like, no, you haven't. I mean, you can play that sound effect again. Uh this is okay, this is the final sound effect. Let me play it again. 
This is in Roblox. That's the sound effect. So there is no. (laughs) He desperately tries. And then you can see him getting whipped up into a frenzy in his weird make believe world where this is an important sound. You know, never thinking that maybe the sound effect became important because the game was popular. He tries to make this fucking crazy argument that the game is popular because of this one sound effect. I can't think. He spends all of this time showing you how Tommy goes from not caring about it to finding out the game is popular to suddenly trying to make it his own thing. And in real time, you can see him struggling, trying to find a way to do that. And it just, it exposes him so beautifully in a relatively quick point of time. And again, this is a quarter second sound time. that that I wish uh, Harris commented on. We commented on that. I'm not sure legally you can copyright small short sounds otherwise people can copyright small sounds that end up being used anywhere or close to it's you can't do it the same way you can't trademark common words you can't trademark like the word the obviously right so that's not even that's not even clear that you could even copyright that but then it's not clear still who made the sound because tommy says in that video that oh we were in the in the room with people that worked uh from uh was it from in, was it inside studios yeah someone's no it was uh um shiny um, uh, shiny shiny yeah. uh, at shiny entertainment was in the room and then we recorded uh, a, a a young girl's sound tommy says this and this is this goes to the point of what happens when someone constantly lies you get worn and broken down thinking well they have to tell the truth at some point in time right not right. everything can be a lie so even i think harris should have stopped and said well why would that even be true that Tommy said that like what evidence is true that when Tommy said that we recorded this girl working coming why is that even potentially true I don't well, I mean at some point you got to stop investigating too I mean you can't keep going down these, no, these no, I'm not blaming I'm not blaming I'm not blaming oh, yeah. Harris but I'm saying like that goes to what happens when someone who can, is a habitual pathological liar you get right. worn down like that so so it was on the reset era forums where People are saying, I think I heard this oof sound before, before even Messiah. And I'm going to play this clip here. This appeared at least twice in the movie. This animated film from, from the late 90s, it was like 97, called Cats Don't Dance. There's a penguin character in the movie that gets swatted away um, and makes an oof sound that is not identical but it's fairly, it's pretty close, and you can picture it being the same sound as the oof sound, just pitched a little bit, and with some echo slash reverb effect put on. So let me play this. This is like five seconds in here. <laughs> you hear that oof? Yeah. Yeah. Could be. It's pretty damn close. Yeah. I'll, I'll play it again. And, and that I- appears more than once people are saying like that's like 95 percent, 99 percent the same sound of and it's just obviously it's been tinkered with so either they got that sound from somewhere else from the, the person that worked on the sound design of cat stone dance or it's the actor who played the penguin kid they actually recorded that sound either way i don't think it's copyrightable under law so no. like that's an interesting little twist here like that sound could have been in a sound pack or 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 pulled from the movie to be used in Messiah. Either way, I mean Joey Joey knows the answer, and Joey yeah. wasn't contacted. Maybe he doesn't want to talk about it. Uh, but like that, no, no one, no one should, no uh, one should contact Joey. Joey will talk to people if Joey wants to talk to people. Sure, but that's he's really the one that actually knows the truth about that yes. sound. At the end of the day, it's not. I I don't think it's Tommy. So. <laughs> no, but that's only a half hour into the video there's another 90 minutes after that yeah and i don't know how much uh h bomber guy knew about tommy i don't know if he, he followed some of the podcast but he, he said that um i think he said he was pretty pretty well unaware of him but he went down the rabbit hole that we've gone down in in bits and pieces about you know the guinness crap uh, we might have mentioned the Cribs thing once or twice, how it probably wasn't Cribs, because who the hell is Tommy Tallarico? But it really goes down looking at someone's... No, uh, we knew it wasn't Cribs beforehand. Someone had already pointed out. Yeah. I mean, that was all stuff that we knew. Uh, so 
so it was interesting to see like, a, like again a larger youtuber with a much sizable audience than us really pull the layers back and really like again at some point you have to start seeing is anything truthful from this person right. is anything everything's a lie being on mtv cribs the guinness records are all lies uh Harris got one uh, inadvertently uh, uh, taken taken down, or his assistant did. Cat who emailed yeah, them yeah, about his it. His assistant did. So like it's it, it's it's kind of funny, but it's also kind of sad, just because how does someone get into positions of power? How does someone start running video games live for like ten years? How do they get to this point where it's uh, where people know where the bodies are hidden with with Tommy Tallarico, but like no one either wanted to speak up or felt they couldn't point out like, Hey, this is bullshit. What a lot of this guy's going on. So I understand that it's tough to get that sort of motion in gear, but now people are starting to come out. People in the comments, this video are like, Hey, yeah, we were, you know, student, uh, orchestra thinking we were working on something for some, someone's project. And then we end up coming to this event where tickets are paid for, and we weren't paid anything to, 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 to play this music. And it's like, Holy shit. Holy shit. <laughs> Yeah. So, so how much of this going on is actually honest? And then obviously it gets to where Tommy's lies got him uh, indicted and he's, you know, convicted of, of a misdemeanor, which was trying to carry $102,000 back into the U.S. from Brazil. And when they like, catch him with the money and ask why he didn't <laughs> fucking, uh, why he didn't declare it because it was more money than you're allowed to travel over the border with. He then just straight up admits to doing a crime and said, oh, I had distributed it between my employees and now I'm taking it back. You literally just admitted to structuring like it's an OK thing to do. Yeah. Just just no, what, no street smarts, no common sense, which I don't think he actually did in reality, but he was trying to be cool about it either way. So we knew about this crime early in the year. We never really talked about it because I, I forget why. I almost feel like I wish we should have because it really shows what type of. I guess uh, dishonest that he is and yes. doing it, and that if he could try to fool around with money and and hide it and and obf obf obfuscate the truth, that what is he going to do with the money that you invested in, in the company? Right, exactly. <laughs> what are you going to do? Uh, so I'm glad that H Bomber guy brought up about this is where the video went to. The Amico was only about 15 minutes total out of this video, maybe 20. It wasn't a huge amount about it. <laughs> That's what uh, was amazing to me was how little. The Amico got focused, and how little you needed of the Amico. Sure, um, honestly, B uh, but because you could have talked about all the lies about about um, not taking pre order money, we're not gonna, you're not gonna, you're not gonna be able to buy it until you can play it, you know, things like that. But I, I think he covered the. Mo I mean, he had to, you know, it was a, it's a two hour video. There's only so much he could have gotten uh, done, and I do think he did focus on the most important part. If you're trying to make it look like he shifts the truth and lies to people. Uh, to improve his standings and narrative, focusing on the Jay Allard and Kara Acker part was yes. probably the best part to focus on. Because that's what got him in trouble with the SEC that we reported on whenever that was last year from the right. Republic thing, when they, we kept, they kept saying that, hey, <laughs> Jay Allard, founder of Xbox, is working on this in February of 2021 when Jay Allard was like, hey, I was gone last summer. I was, I, I've been gone for the company for like six months. Right. I've been out there six, seven months. That's called fraud. <laughs> that H Bomber guy was kind of dancing around that. He's like, what do you call this when you you lie to ask for money? It's, that's fraud. Fraud. <laughs> so I don't know. I, I think there'll be a lot more stories coming out. This video is going to be seen several million times, potentially like a lot of his other videos. I think it's, it's already like, been seen over. I mean, it was seen over a, a million times in two days. It's like a million and a half now. Um, and I'm I it, and this isn't like I don't almost want to say I told you so. That's almost too simple to say we told you so about Tommy, but we did. Uh, but I, I just, it it shouldn't, I think, get to the point where it takes a, a YouTuber with, you know, millions of followers to do this this video. Like, it, it shouldn't have gotten this point. It, it, I think Tommy should have been confronted, quote unquote, publicly before it got to this. And maybe it takes a big YouTuber to do that. People, uh, someone bigger than us. But, like, this was stuff that was known a lot of this for years and he took people's money lying to them for years. And that's all like, you can't undo that. Those people aren't the people that put in their hundred bucks. Most of them aren't getting their money back. The people that were defrauded, the investors lied to, they're not getting their money back. They're done. Uh, like that's never going to, that's never going to be undone. 
And I think also uh, though it, it's it's more. I, I agree. We shouldn't have gotten to this point, but we. Tommy was most important and effective in you know the the nineties and early two thousands. Sure, as it is now, and information was not as widely available. And we've seen that Tommy is a uh, you know at least up to a a a a, a prolific and master liar. Um, you know the lies start small and paint a base coat, and you know he gets in with one person that you 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 trust, and um, you know his legend grows. Now we're at the point where all of this is coming together. Now we're at the point where Tommy Taylor Rico has truly exposed himself as an untrustworthy person and a liar. And, uh, you know, and we're, we're finally there. So I don't think it's necessary. I don't think the fault lays with any one person in particular, but now we are at that point where it's like, okay, this guy sucks and we've got to divest ourselves from them. Uh, sure. But I mean, like two and a half years ago, we were, you know, we were saying this guy's lying about this console coming out and it's obvious because there's, three or four important job listings. I think that was June of 2020, where like I will say that's that was the turning point where we started getting attacked viciously by by his followers because we 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 realize, hey, this is now scammy. We know this is not coming out October 2020. This is the hard proof. Firmware engineer, software engineer. There was, I think, a manufacturing job. Remember that? Where it was like, these are like yes. three, four jobs. Where it was like, there's no way in God's green earth this is coming out. And that's the point I th would hope that people would have looked into it. Would have been like, wait a second. They're asking for a ton of money uh, for this. They have pre-orders for this console that they say is coming out. And here's evidence directly that it's not. And I guess in a perfect world, there would have been more people, at least someone on board to be like, hey, what the fuck is happening here that early? Because that was, again, that was still seven, eight months before the Republic campaign. At that point in time, uh, sure. that June 2020. So I'm not sure what the lesson is to be learned on this, but I do think people at, at some point have to question themselves and who they follow. And you can't just blindly say, hey, I think I think this is going to work out because of the person working on it's Tommy. Uh, you, right. you, you have to look at uh, what has this person actually done. And at some point. Is there well, I think that's the thing. I think a lot of people were looking at what he had done, and I don't think that had started to fall apart enough yet at that point. But sure. But I mean, at that point, what had he done in the past 10 years? He video games live like that was it. Sure. And again, it goes back to um, what happened with Mike Kennedy, where you had some people thinking he can come out with the retro RBS uh, slash click a chameleon. Oh, well, he runs a an eBay style website for video games. And he has does a magazine, therefore he can launch a video game console. And it's like that's not how this works. It's well, not. I mean, same uh, as he 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 has a you know uh, uh, a, a touring orchestral show. It's, it's not yeah. the same as launching a video game system. And you, you know, can, yeah, and you not can everyone know, can be good at everything. Sure, and you can know people. You could um, you can have uh, people in the industry that you might have uh, been friendly with that might be able to help you. But if you're still the one running the show and you have no experience, it's not going to matter. If you're still making the bad decisions and that's going to come out about what the decisions were actually made and when at what time point and how they squandered all this money. Uh, H. Bomber, I talked about, oh, they squandered money on these. Um, they squandered money, uh, money on these two offices. That's not where a bulk of the money went, though. That that was a, a chunk of change. Uh, how about the loans? They repeat themselves with interest in this and the salaries on top. That's where a lot of the money went. That's right. where it went. I mean, no need to argue uh, about what was stupider there, but yes. I mean, but I mean, but I mean like, the money went. that's where the money went. That to me is what was more nefarious. It's like, yeah, we, we have offices, sure. but it's like, dude. That was dumb, but it wasn't ne as nefarious. Yeah, it's yeah. not as fair as, hey, we're to pay ourselves 300, 400,000 a year and, and then pay out these lows and make sure we get interest back uh, so we don't lose money on this and, and the interest at exorbitant rates. That's where it's like, what exactly is this? Is this a straight up investment scam? Uh, masquerading as a console project or it's like yeah we'll do some work to make it seem like we're doing a console we'll have some we'll have some college kids probably in germany make some of these games on the cheap and then we'll just you know what i mean like yeah i can see that because a lot of a lot of uh scam products are actual products in some form they have to show that it's some uh, you know some product in some form and then it falls apart like i said it doesn't start off a scam but it becomes a scam yes so. no yeah very much it's easy to get into scammy territory. Yeah, it, it is. So I, I, I'm not going to try to, I, I'm really not trying to get on my soapbox, but people, 
people in the retro gaming community have to really be careful about who they associate and promote when it comes to this stuff. I'm tired of history repeating itself every two, three years when it comes to these things. I just am. And, and I know people are going to say, we can't be cynical about everyone, or we have to give some people the benefit of the doubt. You can't do that when you're asking for money up front. You just can't. You can't. That's the line when it comes to this stuff. If people, if people want to uh, fund their own stuff and then come out with it and they have a track record of doing it and putting out good products, that's different. If it's a startup company with no record of putting out the product and asking for money up front, it is your, it is your duty to your, not just your audience, but to yourself to be hypercritical of these sort of things. So this doesn't happen. But unfortunately, uh, it didn't happen with, with, a, with a section of the you want to say community. So there you go. Any, any, any last thoughts? Oh, you muted yourself, Ian. I didn't do that. <laughs> Ask to unmute. <laughs> it's a little red microphone, Ian. There it is. It's... Yeah, no, I, I've been muting myself when I cough and I forgot to unmute myself. Um, no, I thought it was, I, I have nothing more to add. It's a great video. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. Uh, if you think two hours sounds long, uh, if you've ever watched any of our Miko coverage with Glee and you've never wa and you haven't watched this, uh, go. I mean, it was as exciting as any movie I've seen. I don't ever, <laughs> I don't ever watch shit that long. And I was like, no, this is this is good. I think I took like one ten minute break to make like a bagel. Um, but we, yeah, we, that, it's worth it's worth watching. Should we pay to have a screening? At the lot, we should we can we can, <laughs> we can go and uh, we can sell tickets. We can do a Q and A before and afterwards. We can we can have food. We can <laughs> that'd be funny. <laughs>